I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and part two of the Samsung Galaxy Victory 4G LTE dog. That's all right. I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and part two of the Samsung Galaxy Victory 4G LTE. It's a mouthful. You have to take a breath as you're saying it. Full video review starts in just a moment, but first, some love to Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices like the Victory for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game, which we turn around and give to you on the site at instantwin.phonedog.com. When you go into Best Buy Mobile to get a device like this, you won't deal with rebates, messy paperwork, waiting 8 to 10 weeks for a debit card that you don't even like. At Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out without paying any rebates. Let's take a look at it. Victory 4G LTE, it's part two of the review, and it starts right now. It's part two of the Samsung Galaxy Victory 4G LTE full video review. And if you think that's a mouthful, well, just think of some of the other names that have been out over this year in the industry. Samsung Galaxy S2 Epic 4G Touch. It's definitely a long name, but it is available now at Sprint for 100 bucks with a two-year agreement. And, you know, specs-wise, features-wise, it reminds me a lot of the Samsung Galaxy Stellar on Verizon. That said, it has 1.2 gigahertz dual-core Snapdragon S4 Lite CPU, 4-inch display, 5-megapixel camera, 720p HD video recording, front-facing camera, Android 4.0, 4G LTE capabilities if you're in a Sprint market that supports it, and a 2,100 milliamp hour battery. So now that that's out of the way, let's take a look and pick up on part two. Let's start with the camera, actually. I'm going to start with a 5-megapixel camera here. And overall, camera quality is pretty decent. I always do a hard reset on these devices, or usually do. Uh, when I jump into the full video reviews, and so I did that uh, earlier this morning, so I was re-downloading some apps, and you're seeing all the uh, the messages pop up like it's new. But you know, you've got your flash capabilities here. You've got a couple of neat options in shooting mode. You can do panorama. You can do smile shot, single shot, cartoon, panorama. Take that iPhone. Just kidding. Quite a few Android devices can do panorama. But uh, five megapixel camera. So when you compare this to other devices on the market, the One X, the Galaxy S3, if you're on Sprint, the Evo 4G LTE. Uh, you know, 8 megapixel cameras with image sense or with great features like burst mode with a S beam or like, you know, buddy photo share, things like that. It's really going to be challenging. You know, you may want to spend the extra hundred bucks and go with one of the high end devices. But still, that said, it's a 5 megapixel camera. It's not terrible by any means. I'm going to bring over a uh, boarding pass I happen to have on my desk here. And we're going to focus on some text and see what we can do here. We'll bring it in. And let's try and get it focused in. So there you go. So overall image quality, and this is in full light. I have several uh, lights shining down on this. Let's take a look here and go into the gallery. Overall, uh, uh, portrait quality is not too bad. I mean, you can see there's some grain around the text, but overall, it's not terrible. This isn't going to win any awards by any means for camera quality. If that's your priority, go with the Galaxy S3, the Evo 4G LTE, something with image sense or with those nice camera features. But that said, it's pretty decent, and if camera's not your priority, it's more of a secondary thing. We've got not just that, but you have a 720p HD video recording capability as well, which you can flip over into from here and then take pictures. And let's do this. Recording. The downside is you can't take pictures while you're in 720p. So if you're recording, you don't have that feature that you have in the Galaxy S3 or again on the Evo 4G LTE. So camera-wise, in comparison to the competition, it's not quite up to par, but that said, for 100 bucks, the camera's not terrible. But again, Droid Razor M, there's a lot of variables here, I keep saying again, but that said, again, Droid Razor M, 99 bucks on Verizon, does have a little bit of a better camera, an 8 megapixel camera that takes better pictures uh, as a whole, based on my testing. Let's take a look at speed test as well. Sprint's 3G has been terrible throughout the year, and then all of a sudden, when I came back from some work travel after the DNC, it had dramatically improved. Network Vision is at least rolled out, as my guess, on the cell site by my office, but let's go ahead and jump over here and change that over and begin the test and see what we can get on 3G. 3G on this device, if you're in a 4G LTE market, some Atlanta, Dallas, any of those, you can take advantage of the 4G capabilities. But again, you're getting mostly 3G speeds here. You're seeing like 0.7 megabits per second, uh, 0.8 megabits per second, so about 700 kilobits per second here on the download. And on the upload, we'll take a look at that as well. Overall, call quality has been pretty decent, though. The earpiece uh, is nice and loud. I've had no problems there. And because it's got the same battery as the Galaxy S3, it's got 2,100, or I should say, same capacity battery. 2,100 milliamp hour battery in this device. Despite having 4G LTE, it has a smaller display that's not HD, and so that has made for a great device when it comes to battery life. Combined with the fact that the 4G LTE isn't here yet, I'm still rolling off 3G. The battery life has actually been pretty impressive all around on this device. Now take this with a grain of salt because again, I've been in a 3G only market, but I've been getting speed, or I mean, uh, battery life tests upward of you know 12 to 14 hours 
with moderate use. So it's definitely been impressive, but again, once LTE rolls in, it's notorious for being a power hog. And obviously, thanks to the smaller display, some of those things offset that power hogginess. If you will, I thought you'd appreciate that power hogginess. But uh, overall, not too bad by any stretch of the imagination in comparison to some of the super phones on the market. Let's also run Quadrant Standard and jump in here and take a look at that because I'm curious to see how the Snapdragon Lite processor affects this. So we'll run the full benchmark here. And again, battery life been very impressed with that. I look forward to testing some LTE speeds here uh, in the next couple of months as it rolls out more across the nation. It's rolling out to, I believe, 100 markets by 2012. If I remember the press release properly, there's so much going on right now that it's hard to keep track uh, of everything. But that said, pretty impressed with that. Happy that, uh, that LTE is finally rolling out in a more mainstream way on Sprint, especially since they've got the iPhone 5, the Evo 4G LTE, the Galaxy S3, and a bevy of mid-range devices like this. But overall, I've been pretty impressed with this device. It's definitely thick, though. I mean, take a look at this device in comparison to you know, the iPhone 5, for example. And obviously, it's $199.99, but even the iPhone 4. Compare it to that. Compare it to the 1S, and you can really see the thickness difference. Compare it to uh, a little bit of a bigger device, Galaxy. Now, I'm kind of just pulling out what I have on my desk at the moment. But you can see, size-wise, it's definitely a chunky monkey. And uh, I like that ice cream, and I think it sounds funny when I say it on video. So I'm going to say it again, chunky monkey. Um, it definitely has some issues there. But that said, you know, maybe you like a meatier device. It's easier to hold for you. Uh, charging time is about the same as a typical Samsung device. That is to say it's pretty slow when it comes to charging, especially if you're used to something, again, like the iPhone, which say what you will about the iPhone, but the phone charges freaking fast. So that's something to keep in mind. 4,054 on Quadrant Standard. Take it with a grain of salt. 4,054. It's not indicative at you know, all times of day-to-day -day performance, but still... That's a pretty impressive speed given the price point of this device. But another thing to keep in mind, the Galaxy Stellar design's a little bit different, buttons are a little bit different, overall look and feel is a little bit different, but 4G LTE on Verizon, very similar specs. It's free after rebate, so I'd like to see Sprint mark this thing down uh, at least to $59, or at least to $49.99, maybe cheaper in that department. We didn't cover the body in part one, so I want to cover this as well. You've got a physical camera button over here, which you can press and hold to access the camera and go back to home, and then you've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up here, a power button up top, volume rocker, lanyard hole, and you've got a micro SD card slot, and your battery is underneath with a flash, and of course your 5 megapixel camera. So, all in all, it's pretty decent design. I like the silver, I like the way it looks. The buttons, as I said in part one, annoy me to no end because they look like physical buttons, but they're actually capacitive buttons, so by default, you kind of want to press them down, and you end up pushing it way too hard, like one of those grumpy old people that's just gotten a touchscreen smartphone for the first time. They're like, why is this not working? And you're like, come on, Grandpa. You're like, you don't have to push it that hard. Unfortunately, it's kind of the vibe that you get with these buttons because you know everybody has that person in their life, too, where it's like, why is this not working? You're like, maybe if you pushed it a little bit lighter, uh, it wouldn't be an issue. I'm sorry, I did not mean to get on a tangent about touchscreens and old people using touchscreens, but... That's, you know, I kind of get that feeling with these because you just by default want to push them down. But again, press and hold home and you can access your task manager and pretty much a stock implementation of task manager here uh, where you can go in. Of course, S-Voice is pre-installed as well. But I want to show you this and you can go into task manager and take a look at your running applications. Actually, let's take a look at S-Voice. We'll skip this. And then I have S-Voice. Call Timothy. I don't think I have a Timothy in my phone, but we'll see. You can see me on the screen. I look like I'm really pondering Sorry, something. I didn't find anyone named Gemita in your contact. Let's try this. Hi, Galaxy. Actually. Call Bill. Calling Bill Stevenson. So kind of similar in some ways to Siri, uh, but it still needs some work in a lot of departments. That's well, that just... typical uh, look and feel there. And I wanted to show you one other thing. Before we sign out, 611. Let me just do a quick 611 test. Which actually, I knew that was going to bring up Sprint Zone. That's not what I wanted. Let's do, uh, we'll just call Stephanie Hammersmith. Unfortunately, as you can see here, you don't have the volume. You've got your volume over here, but you can't add the extra volume like you can on the Galaxy S3 on the Note 2 with that little button over there on the side on the call set. So if it's too loud, or if it's not loud enough for you at the maximum volume, unfortunately, you either need to do a Bluetooth headset or you might be out of luck. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com with the Galaxy Victory 4G LTE. Overall, pretty impressed with this device. It's nice to see these kind of higher-end, mid-range devices penetrate into the market. That said, 100 bucks here, and while it does have some pretty decent specs, for 100 bucks, I can get spec higher devices that are spec higher on other carriers. This device, the equivalent at least, is free on Verizon. I'd like to see Sprint lower this to at least $49.99, if not make it free 
as well. Keep it locked on the site for continuing coverage. Be sure to check out facebook.com slash phone dog. We're doing an awesome giveaway. We call it the greatest tech giveaway ever too. It's your opportunity to win awesome smartphones and it's only available at facebook.com slash phone dog. Hit me up on Twitter as well, phone dog underscore Aaron and on Facebook at facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Thanks much for watching and as always, we'll see you next time.